So who wants to guess what my favorite drink is? You will win a prize. You will not. Sorry. You will not win a prize. But if you guess what that drink is, it's right there. Today we're going to be doing a little breakdown from a music video I just shot and easily it's one of my favorite videos that I've done in a really long time. Uh, not only because the actual video came out amazing, but just the experience of shooting it. Um, you don't have thing, you don't have shoots like this very often, and when you do, it's special. Um, this music video was directed by Colin Tunney, aka Cultivision, aka Cult Classic. Check them out. So backstory on this music video: him and I flew down to Orlando, Florida, to shoot for this group called See You Soon. They're so good. This is like one of the few times, probably only time, that like I've worked with an artist and actually consistently listened to their music on a regular basis. So if you want to see the entire music video, head over to their page in the description below. It is well worth the watch, the directing and the editing and the talent that this group has. It really shows throughout this video and it was just an amazing experience. So we're going to be doing another quick cinematography breakdown and I promise it will be quick. We're only going to be going over one particular scene out of this music video. It is honestly my favorite and if you have seen it, it's the bathroom scene and it's just, it's pretty gnarly to be honest. That's what I think of it. So to continue the backstory, it was just Colin and I on this whole entire project and that's something that we are both extremely proud of is being able to create something that looks and feels this good and professional with only two people and that was something that we both sat down with and talked to each other about and how proud we are of each other that we were able to accomplish this. So I really owe a lot to Colin for the inspiration and pushing the boundaries in terms of music videos because a lot of times they can get very stale and I really feel like every music video that I've done with him over the past year or so has evolved and, and I've seen him grow as an artist and as a director. It's been awesome working with him over the few months and being able to work alongside of him and take his ideas and actually make it a reality. Um, and I, I only see a bright, bright future for him and uh, what he's going to be doing in this music video world and other avenues if he doesn't want to do only music videos. First things I want to talk about are the camera and lenses. So what we shot on for this was the Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K G2, obviously because it's the best. Maybe not the best, but it's the best to me at this current moment. We also shot with the Pocket 6K, not the Pro, just the regular 6K. And for lenses, we ended up having an amazing set of lenses, which I'm super fortunate about. And we had the Sigma R 18 to 35 and the 24 to 70. It's just lovely. That was bad. <laughs> oh. It's getting there. Even though we only had the Sigma Art lens, that paired with the Ursa is something that I'm very familiar with over the past year, year and a half or so. If you also only have the Sigma Art lineup, please don't get discouraged that you need the best lenses. You really don't. You just need to figure out how to use the lenses to your advantage. Can you add anything in front of the lens to make it a little bit more stylized? Um, don't get discouraged that you only have that. You can make some beautiful images with Sigma Arts and you don't need a 30,000, it would be nice, but if that's all you got, you gotta make it happen. First thing I wanna mention since we're on the topic of lenses, you'll notice that there's a slight blurriness in the frame, and that is because we took a little bit of Vaseline and put it on the front of the UV filter on the lens. So quick tip, you don't wanna put anything on the actual glass of the lens. I always recommend getting a UV filter, or getting a couple of them, in case you ever want to do anything like spray it or put Vaseline on it, you're not actually damaging the lens, you're just putting it on the UV filter. The effect that this kind of aided to was the dreamy, maybe hallucinated, kind of blurry, kind of trippy look. And I think that tended really well to this style because she's almost, the story's in almost like a nightmare and like a dreamlike state. So having that blurriness and that kind of glow I really think emphasized this feeling of, of like alter reality. And going back to the fact that we only use the Sigma Arts, a good way to add some character to the lenses like that, for example, is just putting a little Vaseline on the lens, but don't overdo it because you will not be able to see out of the lens. So just a little bit. Next thing I want to talk about is just the camera movement. We pretty much stuck between sticks and handheld. So you'll notice most of the still shots that we have are at a Dutch angle. 
The reason why we chose to go with a Dutch angle is because it evokes a certain eeriness and a kind of uneasiness in a way. And this video in and of itself evokes that feeling and just being able to provide that initially with just the off-axis camera angle really does allow the viewer to get that sense of uneasiness and kind of like something's off in the frame something's off in the story and that to me lends well with the actual story of the music video so next we're just going to move to lighting and the lighting setup that i chose for this one isn't something that i would normally do for a bathtub scene particularly but what happened was, again, we came from Orlando, so we had to rent gear and have it shipped to the Orlando location. Unfortunately, one of the lighting packages didn't arrive until a day or two later, so we, they were tubes, by the way, and that's what I probably would have used, but sometimes things happen for a reason because I'm really happy with the way this looked out based on the fact that I was limited to only this light and it just so happened that this light was phenomenal to be stuck with because it was a light panel gemini 2x1 and that is a full spectrum rgb soft panel light and it's honestly one of my favorites so considering that i was stuck with the light panel gemini i had to evolve a little bit my approach to lighting this scene and the goal was for something that was definitely moody something that was kind of eerie something that was kind of maybe gross in a way um, and in terms of color temperature, I kept it at 5600, but I increased the tint to be a slightly greener look. And I didn't go full green on the RGB or anything because I wanted that natural kind of daylight look, but with a slight off color. And just allowing to have a little bit of a tint of green just really emphasized the look of kind of sickness in a way. How I accomplished this look with this light was taking it, putting it on a combo stand, lifting it as high as possible, and kind of putting it at a slightly downward angle so it was kind of hitting the back wall of the bathtub and kind of just slowly washing down towards her and towards the bottom of the tub. So the hottest point was at the top of the bath that you don't really see and it's the light slowly trickles down. I don't even, I don't even know why I say slowly because it's not like water. So having that light hit the back wall initially and then gradually come down towards her allowed for this kind of interesting gradient. But the first thing that I noticed when I set this up was that it was ugly. There was no contrast, it was flat. It was just not what I wanted at all. I put the barn doors on the light and I closed the bottom of it just a little bit. What that did was close about maybe 50 to 60% of the actual light output coming from the lower half of the light, hitting maybe her and the bottom half of the shower that I didn't want. By closing that off with the barn doors, that blocked so much light that only maybe 40% of the light was hitting that wall and then trickling down. To emphasize some of this contrast a little bit more, I took a 4x4 neg and placed it right in front of the tub, just so when she was near the edge or when I was coming in close, there was a black sheet kind of blocking all of the light so there wasn't any more bounce coming from say the toilet or the mirrors or the reflection or anything like that. By having that 4x, that just really increased the contrast and really started to emphasize a shadow side. So hopefully that made sense. And the last thing that I wanna mention is just this top-down camera angle. And it wasn't anything crazy, but instead of using the Ursa because it was way too heavy, we opted to use the Pocket. And it's great to have a Pocket and an Ursa simultaneously because one, they are pretty much the same camera, except one's smaller, one's bigger, and you are able to do a lot more things with that smaller camera that you can't with the big one. So having that option really allowed us the flexibility and creative and unique angles throughout this music video, like the snorri cam, these top downs, and a couple other different things that were not possible with the Ursa. But for this top down, what we did was take a C-stand, sandbag it, make sure the weight was set properly. We had a knuckle, we had an arm, and we took a quarter inch spigot, and I will link that in the description below, put that in the knuckle, screw that camera on to the spigot, so it was attached and top down. That's really it, it's pretty simple. Just make sure that you are safe, you have your sandbags and everything is tightened properly. And I wouldn't recommend leaving the camera upside down, just chilling. Make sure someone's always monitoring it and someone kind of has eyes on it at all times because one little, might be toast or strudel. 
So that's it. Told you it was going to be quick. Hopefully you found today to be beneficial. I appreciate you guys as always. And again, if you want to see this entire music video, which I highly recommend, go to the description below and click the link from the artist page. See you soon. The song is called No Daylight, directed by Colin Tunney, aka Cultivision, aka Cult Classic. Not sure what he wanted me to say, so I said all three. Peace out. Have a great day. I'll see you soon.